me tell you why this problem is just so incredibly hard. Well, it turns out the world civilization drives about 10 trillion miles per year. Okay, 10 trillion miles. Just, just you got to get that number in your head. It's 10 trillion miles. It's 1,000 billion. Well, it's 10,000 billions. 10 trillion miles. 10 trillion miles. And in the United States, 770 accidents happen from 1 billion miles. 770 accidents happen from 1 billion miles. The amount, the, the safety work that, that has been done throughout the years in the United States has really reduced the amount of fatalities and accidents. And yet, it would take you driving 1 billion miles, society driving 1 billion miles in the United States to produce 770 accidents. And so the question that you have to ask yourself is, how confident are you when your car, your fleet of test cars of 20, over one year has driven about a million miles. It takes 20 cars driving test drive all year long to test drive a million miles. And yet it takes a billion miles to have experienced 770 accidents. And we're trying to build a system that is better than humans at driving. And so clearly the amount of coverage, scenario coverage and miles coverage is just not possible in real life. And this is where NVIDIA's skill can really shine. We know how to build virtual reality worlds. And so we imagine this, that in the future, there'll be thousands of these virtual reality worlds with thousands of different scenarios running at the same time. And our AI car is navigating itself and driving and testing itself in all of these virtual reality worlds. And if any of those tests were to fail, it would send us an email, we would jump into it in virtual reality and figure out what's going on. You guys see that? So we have all these virtual reality worlds. Well, let me show it to you today. Mark? So what we're going to show you is this. This is a virtual reality simulator. And before you start, uh, this is the front view, your side mirrors, and your rear view mirror. Okay? Go ahead, Mark. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Hey, good, Jensen. One of NVIDIA's veterans. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, let's, let's start this thing. We're, so we're, gonna, we're jittering our world. We're running four simultaneous cameras, as you mentioned. Uh, we've got a pretty uh, aggressive driver here in front of us. We've defined a scenario that's causing all the traffic to jam up. Um, but as you mentioned, we've got all the cameras. We're running on multiple GPUs, so it's a scalable system. As cars get more and more sensors, more cameras, more LiDARs, we're going to need the horsepower of multiple GPUs, and we're showing that to you right here. Okay, so we could do, of course, we could simulate daylight scenario. Let's simulate other scenarios. Okay, let's, uh, why don't we turn the lights out and go to night. So here's the same setup, only now we're doing all the dynamic lighting. So the headlights of the cars, the, the light posts that are lighting the uh, road. The lights under the bridge as we drive under here, these are all dynamic real-time lights. And, and the, the key here is that the, the fidelity of the simulation has to be sufficiently high that the sensor stack, all the software that we create, would just operate as they would in real life. That's exactly right. Right? So, so and every one of the sensors needs to have GPU associated with it to, to generate its, per, its view of the universe, its view of the world that it's in. And so, so today we're simulating with four GPUs, with four cameras, but obviously we have the ability to spawn off a whole large number of GPUs. So, so if, you have, if you have eight LiDAR systems around your car, you have eight cameras around your car, you have six radars, we have the ability to generate all of that and feed that information into our sensors. And if we are successful in doing that, our artificial intelligence network, all of the network, all the software that we ran, that we developed, should just work. So Mark, let's turn that on. That's right. Okay, so let's, uh, here we go. Now this is what we're, the, our drive stack is seeing on Drive PX. This is all the detection of the cars in the, in the world, the lane detection you're seeing going on. Uh, and we've been self-driving this whole time, by the way. So as we ran into that little traffic jam, the uh, Drive PX detected it and slowed down and, and kept us safe. And notice we're detecting all the cars, we're detecting all the lanes, but here's the amazing thing. Earlier, the video that you saw were real cars in the real world. We didn't change one line of code iota. The code is exactly the same code that was developed by the engineers. We, of course, copied it over to 
send it over to this data center, and it's running on exactly the same Drive PX, Drive Xavier, and Drive Pegasus computer that we would drive in the car. And as a result, it's exactly the same sensor response. And this, the perception, the localization, the planning stack all work exactly the same way. And now you're at the end of your... So we reached the end of that scenario. Can I show you another one? Yeah, show me another okay. scenario. So let's switch to the other system. And so this is one of the beautiful things in virtual reality. We could create whatever scenario we want. And as you know, in test car driving, you could go days, months, weeks, and never run into a weird scenario. So there's, and so uh, we could create all kinds of strange and corner conditions right. in virtual reality. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, sorry. Uh, so the same uh, adversarial driver just came through. Uh, and now uh, we found one of San Jose's finest uh, is in pursuit of him. You so see the, the cop coming up in the back, the policeman coming up on the back, <laughs> and it's coming up on the side. There you go. So he coming, and of course, all the dynamic lighting. So you've seen the red and the blue lights light up the world. Uh, some of that strobing effect could affect the sensor, so we need to make sure we're modeling that correctly. That's really, that's really terrific. And so, one, the First is to recreate virtual reality in all kinds of weather conditions and day and night conditions. It has, to be, it has to have the fidelity and the performance that basically simulates reality. Two, that simulation of reality has to be so high and the computer itself has to be able to run the original unchanged software so that we could test everything as is That's inside right. a virtual reality world. And when it passes that, then we can take it and put it into the car completely unchanged. We just OTA directly into the car and it should just work. And then third, we could use it to create extreme corner rare scenarios and it's completely repeatable. Every single time that police car shows up exactly the same way. That's right. And so we could have the ability, if we re repeatability engineers could debug systems. That's right. Determined These three system. fundamental capabilities are made possible. We call this drive sim. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Daly. And so drive sim, drive sim, drive sim, just imagine the amount of capable technology had, that has been brought to bear. Drive sim, the simulator, but most importantly, the computer inside it and all the driving stacks. And so you got the image generator. This image generator is generating the world. Now this image generator, in the context of a video game, this image generator is a gaming PC, and the person that would be driving the car would be a person, a person driving the, the, uh, the racing simulator. But no, we replace that person with an artificial intelligence AV computer, a self-driving car computer. Inside the self-driving car computer is the drive Xavier and the drive Pegasus, and they're connected Literally, the output of the image generators go into, and there's a sensor adapter, and it goes directly into the drive computers. The exact same software stack runs, and it performs the right actions, perceives the world, performs the right actions, sends back the driving control to the image generator, which controls this virtual reality world. We will have thousands of, con we call this drive constellation, Pegasus in the sky a constellation of them. Pegasus in the sky, a constellation of them. We're going to have thousands of constellations. These virtual reality worlds will all be running simultaneously, and hopefully we could cover a large, large coverage of scenarios. With just 10,000 constellations, we can cover 3 billion miles a year. Incredible. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the NVIDIA Drive Sim and our constellation, and it is how we're going to bridge the gap between test, actual test driving and the trillions of miles and the billions of miles that we need to experience over time. Well, as I mentioned, NVIDIA has created a platform, it's an open platform, and it takes it takes a community to build the future of autonomous driving. It's about the car companies, it's about the trucking companies, it's about mobility service companies, it's about the tier one suppliers that are expert in building these systems and components for car companies. But it's about mapping companies, it's about sensor companies. 
we work so closely with all the LiDAR companies and all the camera companies to make sure that these future sensors are as high fidelity, as high performance, and as robust as possible. And that the algorithms they use are as efficient as possible. We work with startups all over the world. NVIDIA's platform is an open platform. Last year, we had 320 partners. The year before that, we had 250 partners. And today, we have 370 partners. We're working with people all over the world. This is a, one of the world's largest industries. We're making the fundamental investment for the future of AV computing. The AV computer, all the software driving stack, and the end-to-end -end development system that will support this fleet and this industry for as long as we shall live and continue to make it better over time, taking it step by step as we are so mindful of safety.